Hey guys, um, my name is Arun. I am an incoming pediatrics resident uh, to the US and today um, I will be collaborating with Match a Resident to bring to you a mini series on how to do literature reviews, how to do research essentially. So this is gonna be a quick guide on how to do a literature review. So let's begin with what is research to be, to be exact? Well, there's different types of research. There are cohort studies, case control studies. Now these would typically involve you being in the hospital most of the time with groups of patients. So in cohort studies, you'll be looking at one group of patients and assessing them either retrospectively. So looking at the records from before or prospectively, which is basically following up with them as time goes. Case control studies, this is where you're comparing two different groups of people. So um, for example, in patients who have a disease and patients who don't have a disease, for example. Randomized control trials. Now these are, uh, to be honest with you, dream studies to be part of um, where you're essentially testing a drug and it's, um, its effectiveness, its side effects and things um, on patients. And sometimes even, um, you know, even healthy people, there are different stages to randomized control trials, right? With systematic reviews, this is where you're gonna, you're gonna be looking at a particular topic. You're gonna have defined criteria. You're gonna be finding all these articles. You're gonna be creating something called a prisma diagram. Okay, so far this seems like there's a lot of work to research, right? Now, this whole presentation and this whole series is aimed at making research easier for you. All right, so we're coming to literature reviews and I'm gonna focus on literature reviews today. All right, so, why literature reviews? Why am I focusing on this? It's a great place to start if you haven't had experience in research. This will help you um, know how to find articles. This will help you um, uh, know how to extract information from articles, how to structure a paper, keep practicing your writing styles, how to do referencing. It's the perfect basic building block. It's still a publication when you still submit it. All right, but it's a great place to start. It is equally as valid. It is very important, all right? So we're gonna be looking at how to hone in your writing skills. You know, uh, with the literature reviews, you'll be able to understand the basics of reading existing articles, using information, and understand how to structure a paper. And don't worry, through this series, we're gonna go through how to do each and every one of these things. So a common question that I've seen, especially after interacting with uh, members of Match Resident, and um, you know, med students and uh, graduates who have inquired about research is, I've never done one before, how do I start? This is, you've come to the right place. All right, so our next topic is the nuts and bolts of research, of literature review. First thing is, how do we come up with a topic, right? So when it comes to coming up with a topic, you have to identify your interest. Consider the specialty or specialties that you're interested in. All right, so for example, I am a hardcore pediatrics fan. I love pediatrics with all my heart, right? So every research project or every research idea that I want to develop would be one, you know, to do with pediatrics because that's something I'm passionate about. So I'm gonna give you an example of, you know, either uh, of using pediatrics as a specialty and formulating a research question in this particular scenario, all right? So you can look at anything from diseases, treatments, diagnostic methods, pathophysiologies, incidences, risk factors. These are areas that you can target for literature reviews. All right, so let's go through an example. All right, now I've particularly chosen this diagram over here because you want two things. One, one of the very important things to look at is variations in incidence. So for example, if you're looking at uh, retinopathy of prematurity, for example, now we know that it's effect, It's uh, usually caused by um, oxygen, right? Administering oxygen for prolonged periods of time can sometimes induce the formation of reactive oxygen species and can cause damage, especially in premature infants who have very fragile retinal vessels, right? Now, when we look at the world over here, we can see that some countries unfortunately don't have the resources to monitor oxygen um, uh, administration. Some countries don't have uh, protocols set. So variations can, you know, occur from high income to low income countries. 
So it's important that the study that you choose, the topic that you choose is niche, but it's not so niche that it cannot be generalized to the entire world, right? You wanna be able to generalize your topic. You wanna be able to use the, use the information that you're putting out there and people from around the world should be able to read that and be like, okay, you know what? We should maybe look at this in our hospital. It should be a clip, a pl <laughs> applicable to as many people as possible, all right? So the relevancy of this uh, question, the question is to ask yourself before confirming your research question. Has this been researched recently? So if you're looking at, say, for example, retinopathy of prematurity, and you see that in the last two or three years, there have been a lot of studies on the incidence, on the pathophysiology, on the risk factors globally, you want to do something that adds value, right? That's coming to my second point. Does it add value to the patients, clinicians, or the research community? Or are you just repeating what's recently been said? So for example, um, you could be doing retinopathy of prematurity. You could find out, okay, specifically, uh, we're looking at oxygen protocols, specifically. All right, so now you're not going very deep into oxygen protocols per se, in the sense that you're not looking at a particular part of the protocol, you're looking at the protocol as a whole. So in this scenario, what you would want to do is, okay, in the last two or three years, has there been a lot of studies that looked at oxygen protocols for retinopathy or prematurity in countries around the world? If there hasn't, that is a great way. You can investigate. And you, you might be thinking, okay, how long um, ago should the studies be from? Because what if I use a study from you know, 1998 or 2006? So the general rule is if it's a relatively common condition, the ideal range is studies within the last five years. However, if you are looking at a niche topic that requires more research, right, you can extend that to eight years, right? And the maximum I would recommend is 10 years, but stick to that five to eight range and you should be safe, all right? And from the questions that you ask in the paper and the questions that you try to answer, you have to wonder, can improvements or changes be made from these questions, all right? So as we go through this and we look at how to structure a paper, you will see all these points falling into place and you'll be able to see, okay, from my question, do I sometimes need to change that question to adapt it, to make it more succinct as I write it? This is another thing we will be exploring. All right, so after this video, the best thing to do is first step, write down the specialty or specialties you're interested in. Secondly, write down a disease that interests you or a particular treatment that interests you. Write, that, write a couple of options down. The next thing to do is to tie that in with either incidents or risk factors or pathophysiology. So for example, I am a, a very, very sort of, I have a very keen interest in pediatric hematology oncology. So um, one of the uh, diseases that I'm very intrigued by that I'd like to learn more about is uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And so I've noticed that, you know, your, in your inspiration for questions can come from anywhere. So, um, you know, sometimes on medical TV shows, you might see uh, someone coming in with um, febrile neutropenia, for example, severe infection with someone who is immunocompromised with leukemia. It's like, okay, well, what is the prevalence of infections? What are the different types of infections that occur? Which one is more common? These are questions that I start to ask myself. And then there you go. That's your question. What is the prevalence of infections in acute lymphoblastic leukemia? And within that paper, what am I going to be looking at? I'm going to be looking at, well, what is the incidence of bacterial? What is the incidence of viral and fungal? And what prophylaxis? And as you mind map this and as you branch out, you essentially are filling in the structure of your paper, all right? So this is our first video for literature reviews. I hope this has been a good start. I'm going to see you in the next video. We're going to talk about coming up with a paper, all right? And I'm going to go through a research question with you and how to structure them and where to find information. But thank you so much for joining me on this video and see you soon.